Mixing with Mike, plug-in of the week comes from Universal Audio. It's the Hitsville Reverb Chambers. So this is the second plug-in. They had the uh, EQ, which they emulated. Now they did the Reverb Chambers. These Reverb Chambers go back to the original studios. Uh, chamber 1 and Chamber 2 are from two different houses that were uh, both used and modified for uh, having recording happen in them. And uh, they had these attics. They decided to turn them into reverb chambers, and the rest is history. Those two buildings are now the Motown Museum, and uh, so those chambers are perfectly preserved. They never did anything with them, and so they were able to bring in all of the original gear, uh, set up all the microphones, uh, going back with the original engineers and people who uh, worked there, uh, set everything up as was, and capture it. So uh, it's a very cool plugin. Um, kind of a, a, a little bit akin to what they did with the Capitol Chambers, uh, except for Motown. Uh, so this works for both the UAD-X, uh, which is the native version, and it also works uh, for uh, the UAD uh, normal version, which will work with the external processors, satellites, etc. And uh, let's dig right into it. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit just to get to it. Two chambers. Uh, they have the street address for both of those on West Grand Boulevard, for those of you who live in Detroit. Uh, the two different rooms, there are different shapes to them. Uh, there's also a little info thing here, which will tell you a bit about uh, the chambers and what they sound, what sounds good in them and stuff like that. So that's kind of a handy guide. With each room, you have two different speaker systems, um, the BZK 800s. Uh, and the JBL uh, uh, 2482s, which is uh, a multi-chamber folded horn, which spits out at the wall. And then there's a series of microphones. You have options uh, to go to. Um, there is a distance control. So in this room, the distance control automatically, or this chamber, it's set to the minimum. If you set it to chamber two, it starts in the middle. So that is the sort of... Uh, normalized distance and then you can move them closer or move them farther away and you'll see when this the door opens and it will refresh so that as you make an adjustment that shows how long it will take to do it now uh they say this in the manual but and it's true i've tried it this is the native version here and it actually updates faster than the regular version so that's just something I don't know, maybe to consider if you're going through settings and, uh, and, you know, they're sort of like moderately heavy in terms of um, how much CPU power it takes off of uh, your UAD satellite processor. So it's a little bit of that. In Chamber 2, they have two different pe uh, speaker systems. They have an Altec 605 and a BSC 901s. So again, each will give you different tonal qualities. And then they have the same microphone collection for each, although some set to different patterns. So the uh, 545 is a sure Unidyne. It's the predecessor to the SM57. Uh, there is the RCA um, uh, 44 um, DX, I'm sorry, BX, excuse me. And uh, that's a ribbon bike figure of eight pattern. Uh, the 631 is a uh, dynamic Omni microphone from Electro Voice, and the KM86 is a Neumann microphone, which has a multi-pattern setup. I believe when you set it up here in Chamber 2, I think it is configured in just, it's figured in Omni, okay? Uh, and uh, over here in the chamber, you can see what is configured here. So they put it, they put, set it up in a Blum line pattern, right, um, with that particular mic. So you could see it, um, uh, that set up there. So anyway, that's just to give you a basic idea of how they configured it, how they recorded it, and the information drives me crazy. The other controls, uh, essentially there's a mono switch for monoing up the reverb. A lot of those original records were mono. I'm not sure exactly what year they built the chambers. That may have been a thing in there. So I don't think this goes back to the earliest of the Motown recordings, but, um, but, you know, somewhere along the line, they added them in. There's a width control, which they added in. So you can get a uh, full stereo width, uh, and then you can bring it all the way down to mono here. There's a pre-delay added in up to 250 milliseconds. This should operate pretty quickly. Um, there is two level controls. Now, based on the speaker system that you select, it's affecting the crossover um, and the level uh, crossover levels above and below 
uh, for all the different speaker systems. So it's a little bit different for each of them, and you have to just sort of feel that out. So you get a little boost uh, gain. The attenuation on the low end can go down to minus 36, so you can really thin out a reverb if you feel like you need to. The decay can be adjusted. It's set to its maximum. So the maximum reverb time on these chambers is about three to four seconds, which is very long. So unless you have a very slow song uh, where you have that open, much openness or space, um, then most of the time you're going to want to dial it back. Um, and you could dial it back all the way to one second. So you'll know that it's activated because when you adjust it, this will flash. And then when it activates, um, it'll it'll engage there again i'm doing the native version here just because it's faster mix control uh is here if you want to set it up that way and the solo makes it 100 percent wet that's what it comes up as default power actually uh shuts down the lights too in addition to bypassing the plugin all pretty straightforward the rest of the uad x stuff you can read in the manual let's get to some audio examples so i'm going to close this sucker down save a little cpu Zoom back out here for a second. Um, let's start with a little bit of a, a drum sound here. So I had set up, um, I, I will just do this one here. I have the two versions, one that I set up sonically, uh, and then I did a match here so we could just kind of show a little bit of the range of this. So here's the, uh, the drums for this. wanted to keep kind of a tighter uh, sound on this went with the um, the uh, Unidyne uh, 545 just to give like a tighter sound but just to kind of show you some other things even at this close distance um, what the different microphones sound like here is the the ribbon mics So you got a sense of the range of what it can do. That's just with chamber two. If we switch over to chamber one, the cool part is it will preserve the settings that you set up in chamber two. So you could do a quick comparison. So this is a, a shorter reverb time, like a tighter decay, so I can increase that. Just... I take that back. <laughs> a brighter sound. So 
to give you an idea of the range, this is where I ended up with uh, on this one. Just wanted to give it like a nice little subtle sense of depth, but keep it relatively dry. And, uh, you know, so let's, let's move on. You know, uh, just to kind of, just so you can get a sense of the range of what it can do. Here's a, here's a, um, an orchestral uh, section here. Let's pick it. Or some strings. And then you can you know, EQ your way into more depth or body. So this will be changing what's projecting out of the speaker. So you notice that they have pretty distinct tonal characters, the different speaker systems. Some are a bit more balanced. Some have like a, you know, much more filtered horn-like kind of sound. Um, and then you can control it from there. But then you also have the pre-delay here. And, and this is a sound, I went a bit tighter here just because this is not like a big orchestral piece. It's sort of like a drier, tighter, a little bit more, what you call like an indie folk kind of song. A little bit more uh, country in it, a little bit tighter, not as big and lush with the reverbs. But. Still decent size. Pulled back a little bit on the top end uh, just to get, um, you know, so I don't lose the air, but I wanted a little bit more body out of it just to get a sense of depth and a little bit of pre-delay. Here, let's see if I... Now, if just to show you... I'm actually going to leave the pre-delay off and, and not make it as, as deep. That'll create, the pre-delay will help to create a separation. So anything that you want, like a bit of more detail on, for example, like the vocal, um, I, you can, you know, the pre-delay will help to separate it, you know, uh, give it a little bit of space just so you hear more of the detail. It's not as enmeshed or as embedded in the reverb. To Again. So here, what I had done is I had copied these settings uh, to the native version. To love again. So I can make it a little bit more like an echo. You run away. Using the uh, cardioid pattern, I can get a... To love tighter sound again. so we run away oh don't give up on me 
to love. And then, you know, whatever. I can go to like a whole variety. Like if I wanted more warmth, go into the uh, 44 to DX. To love again. You run. So anyway, you can go through all the different chambers and different settings. There's just like such a myriad of possibilities just between the two types of speakers, the different microphones, the distance. You can really just create so many sounds. The width control ends up being really important because you can do a lot of really cool effects in mono, uh, which, which obviously was obviously a big part of the early Mo uh, Motown records. To love. Again. So I'm just going to add a little bit more depth on this, or pre delay. You run away to love again. I'm just going to mono up that reverb. I'm not sure what it's going to sound like in the mix, but we will, you know, dial that in when we get to it. The other thing is our, our background vocals. And uh, here, let me get to a later section of the background vocals here. Yep, much later. Me, 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 us, 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 us. See how long it takes to click in. Okay, so I just wanted to get like a little bit of body and warmth in on those parts and a sense of space. And uh, let's see what it sounds like all kind of whipped together here for a second. There's, there's uh, just so many options and kind of going through it all will start to get redundant at, at a certain point. But let's just uh, see where we're at here. The past is hard. Trail 
basic idea of what's going on. Really, really, really super cool plugin. A um, lot of just an incredible amount of flexibility with all the different speaker and microphone options. And then uh, the ways that you could adjust it. Don't be afraid of the mono thing is really, really, really cool when you start adding it in, especially if you start moving it around and positioning it um, with different elements in the mix, guitars and stuff like that, just to kind of give them their own little sort of unique mono reverb, just to kind of create a little space or depth or distance with them. Um, really powerful plugin. Uh, I love this one a lot. Uh, can't uh, I, from the minute that I put it up, it was just you know things started coming together quick and um i think if there was any confusing part is i felt like i was always for this particular track kind of pulling things back just based on the pace of the song uh, so but at least i wanted to demo a little bit of what it could do just with the strings how you could see how it can create just like a a nice big space once you open it up move the distance back and then just all just even just the variations with the distance and the decay time uh, is is pretty cool. So uh, nice bit of work by Universal Audio. Uh, definitely worth checking out. And uh, it's part of the UADX, their Spark program. Uh, so if you're a part of that subscription, this was just added to your bundle. No extra charge. If you purchase the plugin, then you get the native version for free. You got a permanent license. If you already have a UAD system and you get it that way, as with all of the others, the collection continues to grow. Nice work by Universal Audio, uh, plug-in of the week, Hitsville Reverb Chambers.